I chose this, this road, this path, my path. People ask, where are you going? Do you know what you're going to do? There are so many different directions I could take. Now I'm supposed to choose one? I am confident. I am curious. I'm ready to figure out who I am. I'm on a mysterious journey into the unknown for the first time in my life. I will explore all of its twists and turns, its side trips, its surprises. Because this road leads to me. I am ready. Juanita, coffee's ready. Janita, coffee's up. Medium coffee for Juniata. It is Juniata. Juniata. Juanita, coffee for Juanita. Juniata. Juniata.
Hello, my name is Jason Moran. I'm Vice President for Enrollment on behalf of the Juniata community. Welcome to your virtual First Look Friday. Uh, it's wonderful having you uh, engage with us uh, at this moment as you're kicking off your college search. And uh, as the day goes on, I uh, hope you have the opportunity to really check out all of the uh, opportunities that we're providing for you virtually. Thrilled to be a part of the start of your college search. And our hope is uh, after today, you're gonna be enticed even more to wanna come and see us on campus once our campus visits uh, resume. Uh, what you'll have the opportunity to see is uh, the greatness uh, that is the Juniata curriculum, our academic programs, our programs of emphasis. You're gonna have the opportunity to hear and learn from our faculty, uh, hopefully current students as well, and then the opportunity to learn about the great work that they are doing from their internship experiences, research, and how all that leads to wonderful outcome experiences that uh, Juniata graduates are living out. Hopefully, also, you'll be able to come and see us and uh, visit us in the uh, great town of Huntington, Pennsylvania. Uh, as I'm uh, talking to you right now, I'm uh, standing at our Peace Chapel, which is one of our future locations here at Juniata College, and it rests in the mountains uh, overlooking our campus and the Huntington community. And as you think about your college search, think about also the location of where your school is located. And the Juniata students get the benefit from Huntington because they've got the best of both worlds. They have the ability to engage in rural engagement opportunities. Town of Huntington relies on Juniata College and therefore the students, the faculty and staff to be partners in our rural economic sustainability, opportunities in healthcare, education, business, even history, psychology, representing all of our programs of emphasis. But also, we're not far away too from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, from Philadelphia, New York City, Washington, DC. We've got a rail line that comes right through our town. And uh, on that rail line, uh, within uh, just a few short hours, you're in one of those metropolitan areas. And in those areas, our students are living out their lives uh, through internship opportunities or uh, opportunities to just go and get a day trip to and from. So the, our location is just fundamental in the greatness of the education that we deliver. But you'll have the opportunity to see that for yourself. What I'm going to do is uh, pass this off to our president, Dr. Jim Troja. He'd like to welcome you to this uh, virtual First Look Friday. And uh, on behalf of him and I, again, we hope to have the opportunity to see you on campus when you come and visit and see Juniata and our community for yourself. So, Dr. Troja. Thank you, Jason. Um, hello, everybody out there. You're going to uh, see, in addition to our Peace Chapel, and in the beautiful Allegheny uh, Mountains that you see behind me, you're gonna see two golden retrievers uh, maybe getting into the picture here. Uh, these are um, part of the Juniata family. These are our two goldens, Lainey and Lila. You will see them on campus if you enroll here at the college. Uh, they've joined me and Jason today as we uh, welcome all of you. This is a little bit different. Um, this is uh, unusual and these are unusual times. And uh, before I say much more, I just wanna make sure uh, I, uh, I pass on to all of you uh, good wishes as we face uh, this public health crisis. Uh, all, of our, all of us are in this together and uh, our thoughts and, um, and prayers are with all of you out there and hopefully all of you remain safe. As you think about your next step, uh, your college search, uh, we hope to remain a part of that as you uh, begin uh, this tour of schools, I'm sure that uh, that you're looking at. We hope to have you in person at some point over the next 12 months as you uh, consider your options. Um, we believe that this is an exciting time to join the Juniata community. Um, we've got a lot going on here and uh, as you will uh, see and learn through many of the sessions as part of, the, part of this First Look Friday, um, there's excitement, there's enthusiasm. You'll see the passion uh, from our students about their experiences at Juniata. And we hope uh, that you'll want to be a part of that as well. Um, let me just uh, briefly describe why I think it's an exciting time. So um, back a couple of years ago, we began our comprehensive campaign uh, to raise money to support the Juniata community in three distinct ways. Number one was to continue to make the Juniata experience affordable. So asking our donors and friends to uh, provide new resources to, to Juniata so we can uh, offset the cost to our um, families that are interested in the Juniata experience. That would be bucket number one. Bucket number two is part of this campaign is to support our faculty. They are the engine to everything that we do. So the academic excellence that you are seeking is delivered by our faculty. And we wanna make sure that they are provided every resource as possible. So retaining and recruiting the very best faculty, giving them all the resources they need 
um, as they deliver our curriculum and co-curriculum to all of you. And number three would be infrastructure. So our campaign, we're trying to raise $115 million. A large part of that is about providing the most contemporary facilities as possible, as uh, students um, expect and certainly deserve uh, the most relevant and contemporary classrooms and buildings and recreational centers as possible uh, as you seek your education over your four years here. So um, three buckets of funding uh, totally in excess of $115 million. The reason it's exciting now is that we are nearing completion of that campaign. We are approaching $110 million with one year to go. If you join us uh, soon, those resource resources are becoming to bear and uh, the fruits of that labor will be enjoyed by the students here in the very near term, including uh, a renovated and add-on to Bigley Library. It will be renamed, reimagined as the Tim and Kathy Statton's Learning Commons, and uh, we hope to begin construction on that project very, very soon. Um, so with that, let me again just say welcome to everybody, and uh, we're, we're really glad to have you with us in this way virtually. How can a college become a part of you? It's just school, right? Yet in this quiet, powerful place, it's different. It's like you feel it in your gut. The sense of the possible. Every day, I feel my purpose. My friendships here. This energy. It's all of us working together to change this beautiful mess of a world. I've learned so much already. I wonder, what's next? It gets into your being, this place. I know I will take it with me, wherever I go. This is not just school. This is Juniata. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying our virtual open house today. My name is Steven Simons. I am the Senior Associate Dean of Admission here at Juniata College. And for this session, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the nuts and bolts of applying to Juniata, what we're looking for in an applicant, as well as a little bit about our financial aid process. So first things first, um, as you can see on the screen here, we have some deadlines that you need to be aware of. The fall is quite a few months away, but it's never too early to start planning. So first thing you need to know about applying to Juniata is that we make it very, very easy. First and foremost, we're on the Common Application or the Coalition. Both applications are completely free, so there's no application fee, and it's one application for a bunch of different schools. So if you're already gonna be doing the Common App and if you're already gonna be doing the Coalition App, there's really no excuse not to apply to Juniata College. So we make applying very, very easy on you. Like I already said, with the Common App and with the Coalition, but we're also test optional. So if you're not a very strong standardized test taker, uh, you didn't do so well on the SAT or the ACT, that's okay. You don't have to submit those. We also don't have a supplemental essay. So what does that mean? So the Common App and the Coalition both have an applica uh, application essay that you have to submit. Um, and some schools will require you to do an extra essay or a set of short answer questions. Juniata doesn't do that. So in summary, no application fee, we're test optional, and we have no supplemental essay. And then if you see these deadlines here, this is when things can start to get a little bit confusing. First and foremost, um, we have an early decision deadline, which is November 15th. Normally, if you were here in person, I would say to you, after your visit, if you leave here today and you have absolutely fallen in love with Juniata and you can't see yourself anywhere else, then the November 15th deadline is the one for you. Uh, however, this may not be the case, so I encourage you to come back and visit, or maybe you love what we said here so much today that you're ready to commit. If you're not ready to commit, but you feel that it's highly likely Juniata is gonna be on your list of likely uh, schools that you're gonna apply to, I would aim for that early action deadline of December 1st, and if you can't make that one, aim for January 5th. If 
you are someone who isn't ready to apply early, if you want to prioritize other schools, that's totally fine. Um, that's why we have our regular decision deadline of March 15th. Now, if you were going to go to our application website right now, you would see that that deadline was, is April 3rd. That's only because this year we have some obviously uh, unforeseen circumstances that have required, to, required us to push our deadline. But in your case, um, that March 15th deadline is the final deadline. There's no um, reason to apply early other than your own sanity. If you feel you're ready to apply, if you want to hear back earlier, um, then I would recommend that. But it doesn't uh, make any difference for merit scholarships. It doesn't uh, increase your likelihood of being admitted. Uh, so really try and go at your own pace and do what's best for you. Uh, some other deadlines on here that are important. Um, if you feel that you are uh, going to be applying for need-based aid, uh, you'll fill out the FAFSA, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, that goes live October 1st. The earlier you submit that in, the earlier you will get a financial aid package. Um, we recommend that you try and have all of that stuff done by November 15th. Um, there's no real reason to wait. You might as well get it done early. So that's the application process. In terms of what we're looking for um, in uh, an applicant, first and foremost, we are really looking for students who are going to be successful here. We want to make sure that you're going to graduate from Juniata. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we look at is that high school or college transcript. I want to see the type of classes that you're taking. I want to see that you're challenging yourselves. And I want to see good grades. So junior year, senior year, if you have the opportunity to increase that rigor, to take more honors classes, more AP classes, more IB classes, more dual enrollment, you should absolutely do that. Improvement is really key too. If you were anything like me, maybe freshman year didn't go so well, and even sophomore year, but the better you do each year, uh, the more that stands out in the application. So don't worry if freshman year wasn't so great. Your junior year and your senior year are ultimately the most important. On the previous slide, I already talked a little bit about test optional and what that means. Um, I always say at Juniata College, we have a complicated relationship with standardized test scores. So what does that mean? If you're a good test taker and you do well on the test, that can be a good indication of future success. So I encourage you to submit those test scores. However, if you're not a good standardized test taker and you feel that you're stronger in the classroom, uh, then you do not have to submit those. All that means is we're gonna take a harder look at your high school transcript, other parts of your application, um, and dig into those a little bit deeper. Again, there's no um, downside to applying test optional. We're not gonna take away scholarships. We're not gonna decrease your chance of getting in. Uh, it's totally up to you, and uh, we can help you decide if you want to apply test optional. You can talk to your admission counselor, and they can make that determination for you. We also want to know who you are as people. Uh, we want to know how Juniata can help you, but we also know, want to know what you can contribute to us. So there's a few ways you can do that. Through the essay, that is really our chance to get to know you as individuals. That's kind of a window into who you are. We also want to know what others say about you. So letters of recommendation, uh, we typically recommend you submit one to three of those. One has to be from an academic um, reference, like a guidance counselor or a teacher. But if you have a coach or community member, if you're involved with volunteering, that you would like to submit that letter of rec, that's absolutely okay as well. Also, um, there are parts on your application where you can say what uh, activities you're a part of, what awards you've won, things like that. Um, you can put that in there, and we want to see what you've been dedicated to. I always recommend students uh, put a lid on their application. It's a little bit cheesy, but it stands for leadership, improvement, and dedication. If you can demonstrate those three things, you're in good shape. It doesn't mean necessarily you're captain of the football team, uh, but if there's a time that you stepped up, uh, if your grades were on an upward trend, and finally with dedication, uh, the things that you've been involved with consistently, that's what really stands out. So those are kind of the things that we're looking for. Um, you are more than just numbers. I'm sure you're going to hear that from a lot of schools. It can sound a little bit cliche, but certainly here at Juniata, we're a small school, we're a small campus, and everybody's presence is felt. All right. Now, I just said that about who you are as people, and the very next slide I have on here are statistics. And I put that on there because I know that's typically the very first question that gets asked. What GPA do I need to have? What test scores do I need to have? This will give you a sense of what our students come in with. Again, these are just averages. There are students that are above that. There are students below that. Um, but it can give you kind of a ballpark. 
Again, sometimes GPAs, test scores don't paint a full picture and that's why we do a holistic review and we look at the things I just talked about, the essay, letters of recommendation, activities, et cetera. Uh, so take this with a grain of salt, but I know that's like the first question I'm gonna get asked, so that's why I put it on there. All right, so that's the admissions process. Uh, so now I'm gonna move on to financial aid. So here at Juniata, just like, the, uh, just like applying to Juniata uh, is very easy, we make applying for financial aid very easy as well. First thing that happens, you submit your application to Juniata, and if you are accepted, you get a merit scholarship. Now these range from twenty-two dollars to $30,000 a year. They're guaranteed for all four years, and they have absolutely nothing to do with the family income. Uh, so it's all about what you've accomplished in high school, grades, test scores, quality of your curriculum, uh, things you do outside the classroom, et cetera. So that's a great way right off the bat to kind of decrease that overall cost that might deter you a little bit. Um, and then finally, if you're interested in applying for financial aid, like I mentioned earlier, you'd submit that FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. We are very committed to making Juniata affordable for you. So as you can see, 98% of our students who are attending Juniata have merit or financial aid. And on average, we meet 94% of demonstrated need. So that means if your family needs uh, a certain amount to afford college, Juniata does a really good job of meeting most of that need. Fundamentally, we will partner with your family to make this an affordable option. That means if you're accepted and it doesn't seem like it's gonna work, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to maybe talk you through the FAFSA. We'd like to help you understand payment options, what outside scholarships you can apply for. Um, paying for college can be intimidating. Uh, it can be uh, very daunting to try and figure all the things out that you need to. Uh, but fundamentally, we're here to help you. So you'll see on this slide here, and you can also find it online, the information for our financial planning office. Uh, feel free to email them, give them a call, and they're happy to help you. Also, every school in the country has to have a net price calculator on their website. That means you can go on and you can get a general sense of what you might have to pay for. At Juniata, um, take that, and with most of the schools you're applying to with a grain of salt, the net price calculator can't always capture your full picture, but it's a good way to start. And finally, um, I would just recommend you apply early and often for any outside scholarships. Cool thing that Juniata does is if you, we do what's called stacking. So any outside scholarships you bring in, we just add that on top of the financial aid award. We don't take anything away from you. Um, and so there's no reason not to go out and apply for as many outside scholarships as you can. And the last thing I'll say is that what you see is what you get. When you're a freshman and you're applying to Juniata and you enroll, that financial aid award that you get your freshman year, that's good for all four years. We're never gonna take the rug out from under you and change that aid award and reduce the amount of aid you're given um, unless your family income drastically changes. So parents, it's a really helpful way to know that you can prepare uh, truly for what a four-year cost of education will be. And we also have a four-year graduation guarantee. So there's no surprise fifth year that you have to pay for, summer semesters, extra classes, um, so that is a really, really nice way for you to be able to plan. So that concludes my session today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Lauren Bowen. I work at Juniata College as the provost or the senior academic officer. And I often like to say when I talk to prospective students that I have maybe the best job in the world because they have the opportunity to work with fabulous faculty educating wonderful students. And I wish so very much that I could be greeting you in person this afternoon. But like all of you, we are in a moment of um, working remotely. And what I'm so grateful for is that we have the opportunity to at least talk with you in, in this venue and introduce you to what I think makes the Juniata academic experience so very special. And in a few minutes, you'll get to meet a few of my colleagues, uh, some of the faculty who will speak more specifically about the academic experience at Juniata. But let me say this by way of introduction. What I think makes Juniata distinctive as you consider where you might want to attend college um, I think what makes us special is our ability to personalize and individualize our education. And that can look a lot of different ways, but for us, I think it me means meeting students where they are. 
We offer an array of academic programs, you're gonna hear more about them, and every student can take advantage of perhaps the, no, don't say perhaps, you're gonna to have to edit that, Lou. Every student can take advantage of the 75 or so designated programs of emphasis that we have, but every student also can individualize their educational experience. And about a quarter to a third of our students do that, working in close consultation with this faculty. Every student has two academic advisors who provide them with the kind of advice and insight and input that lets them tailor their academic experience and make it so very special. And we do this because we understand that the purpose of college, the purpose of higher education is really threefold. Probably what's on your mind right now is what will I do if I go to college, what kind of work will I find? Certainly a Juniata education will prepare you for a meaningful career. It may be something you already know you wanna study. It may be something you don't even know exists yet. But preparation for career is first and foremost what our faculty think about when they design curricula. But that's not all that a college education is. And particularly at an institution like Juniata, students have the opportunity to really think about what it means to live in this world at this moment. And I can't imagine a more poignant time to really think about who we wanna be and the kind of lives we wanna live. So what does it mean to be a citizen of your community, of your nation, of this world? A Juniata education will prepare you to understand what that means. And finally, and perhaps most powerfully, who do you wanna be? What brings you joy in life? A Juniata education will challenge you on that inside the classroom and outside. So what I like to say is that the promise we make to Juniata students if you join us, the promise that we will fulfill by the time you graduate and the president shakes your hand and I call your name as you walk across that stage is we will provide you with knowledge and skills, foundational knowledge and skills that all college educations provide. But more than that, I think we'll awaken in you an intellectual curiosity, the ability to ask questions, intellectual engagement, and the ability to connect bodies of knowledge. How do we know what we know? What do we wanna know? Our commitment to interdisciplinarity and thinking beyond a particular program of emphasis or major, I'd hold up to anybody, any other institution. And we do that so that you can think about what's right and wrong for you. What's the capacity to act ethically so that you can situate yourselves in this world in which you find yourselves living. Those are the attributes of a Juniata graduate. How do we do that? I think we do that by that spirit of asking questions. As I like to say to students, what I think makes Juniata truly special is that you can take some chances, take some risks, make some mistakes. Juniata is not a place where students perform what they've already learned. It's a place where they explore what they wanna learn in partnership with this faculty. And so what that means, I think, is Juniata is a place where you can ask questions. It's a place where you can take chances. It's a place where you can have fun. And finally, and I think this matters so very much as you get to know these faculty in this place, it's a place where you can be kind. And so in that spirit, I wanna introduce you to some of my colleagues and let them tell you a little bit about who they are and what they do and what they contribute to Juniata College. We're gonna start first with Dr. Jim Bogart. Hi everyone, it's uh, nice to have the opportunity to talk to you, even if it's in a virtual capacity, but I'm hoping we can uh, give you and convey a good sense of what it means to be at Juniata and a Juniata student as uh, Provost Bowen just uh, talked about. So again, I'm Jim Bogart, I'm in the physics department and I'm currently also serving as the director of the health professions program. So I'll talk just a moment to kind of about each of those um, as we go on. But um, one of the things we always like to do is talk about one of our favorite classes and um, in physics, one of the classes um, that I most enjoy is a class where I get to interact with students from other disciplines. So it's uh, called Nuclear Threat. It's about um, kind of tangentially the I do, looking into nuclear security. And being able to work with students both in the sciences and outside of the sciences is really rewarding because it brings a unique perspective. I think that's something um, you'll find is a kind of current theme through all um, that we talk about here, this idea of interdisciplinarity. Um, I also have to toot the health professions horn because um, you're going to hear from one of my colleagues in history and they offer some just amazing classes that relate to health professions. So if you're in health professions, um, one of the things that we really try to convey is that you can get great value and things that will help you be a better physician, a better physical therapist, a better allied health professional through these other classes you take outside of your primary area of interest. So in history, they have two courses, one of which um, it talks about uh, medieval medicine. So it's the idea of medicine 
and how it was practiced in the medieval ages. And that's like a really cool thing. Um, another one is uh, medicine, disease, and empire. Another cool class that talks about how people treat disease that kind of impacts the larger political landscape and kind of sets the course for perhaps hundreds of years of history. So some really kind of interesting courses you can really get a deep dive into. And um, I think one thing I always like to talk with students about is I had a faculty position at an R1 university. What that means is at a large university with maybe 60,000 students. And I had classes that had 400, 500 students in it. And I quickly realized that was not what I wanted out of my career. And so I came to Juniata and I stayed at Juniata because of the ability to teach to smaller numbers of students to get to know them not only as students, but as individuals. And I think that's one of these things that even in this challenging time sustains all of us and binds us as a community. So that's one of the things that has brought me here and kept me here. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Jim. I'm gonna turn now to Professor Ryan Gibney um, from our Department of Arts and um, works in integrated media arts, Ryan. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Uh, my name is Ryan Gibney, as the provost mentioned, and I focus all of my curriculum on the integrated media arts. The courses that I oversee are in our interdisciplinary program that is housed in the art department, but we also meet with communications, English, IT computer science, and marketing folks to talk about all of the different areas of curriculum that we're overseeing. Uh, some of the things that I wanted to share with you briefly this morning were the focus, the way that we have our students encouraged to think about who they are. We live the brand in the Integrated Media Arts program. So um, as, as Dr. Bowen mentioned, we ask students to either choose to designate or individualize in our field. Many, the majority of our Integrated Media Arts students are individualized. They choose a mixture of programs and courses in different departments to find the perfect fit for their personal needs. And by doing that, we've created five separate pathways that can be found on our website. Those pathways allow students to think about the different areas that they're interested in merging together. And it is flexible curriculum that allows students to choose courses and designate or individualize as they go through their path at Juniata. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, I'm going to turn to the chair of our history department, Dr. Allison Fletcher, and have her talk with you a little bit about her perspective. Um, my name is Allison Fletcher, as Dr. Bowen said, and I'm a historian of the British Empire. So that means I teach a very wide range of classes on Africa, on modern Europe, on Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and India. So what does history mean to me and why do I think it's important? Well, most importantly, I want to bring the past alive for students. As an undergraduate, I recall being assigned a text that really brought history alive for me. The past just jumped right off the page. It was a transforming experience and obviously one I've never forgotten. And I want my students to feel the same sense of passion, excitement and connection to the past. So I aspire to help students to hear the voices of those long dead, to walk in their footsteps, to know their grief and loss, and importantly, to hear their laughter. So at heart, history is about stories. Listening to and understanding a diverse range of histories and stories that can help us understand our own world and the choices that we wish to make. History, I would also argue, is fun, great fun. We have classes on Rome, on pirates, on samurai warriors, on medieval women, on the Civil War, and many others. History classes interest students in many disciplines. For example, if you're in environmental science, you can take a class on global environmental history. Or as Dr. Bogart so eloquently told us, if you're interested in the health professions, you can take history classes that will really engage you and help you push you on skills and ideas that will help you in your future careers. Thanks. Dr. Wei Cheng Wong from our Department of Accounting, Business and Economics will talk to us a little bit about his experience at Juniata. Thanks, Provost Bowen. Um, as Provost Bowen just said, I am a professor in the Business and Economics Department. I wanted to share a little bit of a personal experience with you just so that you know a little bit more about the Juniata's campus community. 
I came to Juniana 10 years ago from Los Angeles, California. I never thought that I would stay in a small town. Uh, you know, obviously Huntington, Pennsylvania is very different from Los Angeles, but I chose to stay because I got to meet uh, some of the best people that I've ever met in my life uh, during my 10 years tenure here at Juniata. I came to learn, um, you know, uh, many great students, um, the friendly campus, and uh, also came to know the knowledge and kind colleagues who will be your professors, uh, who really greatly care about your well-being and future. Uh, talking about some of the um, courses that I really love to teach, um, I could come to think about at least two courses, uh, one, of the, one of them being uh, Business in China. It's a short-term study abroad program. And uh, as you might uh, find out, that Juniata has a list of short-term study abroad programs that will help you explore and navigate the unknowns. Uh, the one program that I led was Business in China, and I have done it for the past eight years. I came to witness how uh, students uh, are able to navigate and explore the unknown land uh, with their peers, and they came back from the trip to become best friends. Um, and uh, you know, not only they get to um, really understand a different culture, but also interact uh, with people that they have not met in their entire lives. Um, really, that was by itself a life-changing experience, not only for them, but also to me. Uh, the other favorite class that I want, I like to teach is the senior seminar, which is a capstone course uh, in the business department. In that course, uh, I'm able to provide the culminating experience that sums up what they have learned in the business department during the four years of college experience. I watched them prepare for the job market. I helped them review resumes, refer them to other Juniata alum that offered them even job opportunities and even coached them through the interviews and negotiate job offers. So teaching in, liberal, in a liberal arts college like Juniata gives me an untold pleasure and because I was able to really watch and witness the growth of my students. Um, and, uh, you know, um, in this uh, next um, 20, 30 minutes, you're going to uh, be able to learn, you know, all the great things that we offer, not only uh, in the curriculum, but also the unique environment that we have in the campus community. So what I think all four of my colleagues have demonstrated is, um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the vast opportunities that are available to Juniata students, the, the wealth of, of programs, programs of emphasis, um, over 75 from which students can choose, but also the breadth. And I think one of the things that makes a Juniata education special is that no matter what field of study you pursue, you'll have the opportunity to work with um, faculty from all over the college and understand different ways of asking questions, answering questions, and integrating knowledge. One of the most powerful ways I think we do that at Juniata is through our commitment to experiential education. And so I'm gonna ask each of the faculty to talk a little bit about the kinds of experiences, real world experiences that are available to students in their fields of study. And so Wei Chang, why don't we start with you? Thank you, Provost Bowen. Um, you know, I, it, there's this example that immediately came to my mind um, uh, because because of the curriculum that we offer in the business program, we offer a lot of hands-on experiences and opportunities to our students. One student, uh, Joey DeGangji, who graduated in 2018, before he even graduated, I think in his junior year, he started his own company. Through the help of our incubator, uh, Juniana Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, um, we, know we were able to bridge a lot of opportunities from the local investing community, as well as the entrepreneurs, um, in the Juniata network. And he created a company uh, trying to solve uh, the uh, allergic problems that uh, he has with tree nuts and peanuts. And he developed this app as well as a solution, raising money um, to a point that he was able to expand the scope of his company. Now this company um, just today um, was able to be interviewed by Altoona Mirrors and had a fantastic story being published in the newspaper. Um, and when he graduated, I thought, you know, because of his experience, I gotta be able to, um, you know, find a way to keep working with him. And it just happened so that 10 years ago, uh, when I joined Juniata faculty, I co-founded this software company with uh, several of my friends. Um, and, and to this day, I was able to offer uh, several full-time positions to Juniata business graduates. And Joey was one of the people that offer a full-time job right, up, right after he graduated. Uh, now he's working alongside with me and uh, he keeps expanding his business. Now these kind of experiences 
would be the kind of experiences that uh, the, at least the business program would be able to provide. And I believe, um, you know, other disciplines in the Juniata College, all the professors are trying really, really hard to provide uh, not only hands-on experiences, but also interesting experiences for our students um, to implement the knowledge that they have learned in the classroom. Thanks, Wei Chang. Professor Gibney, would you like to add to that from your point of view? Um, I know you do a lot of work with um, students so that they can participate in the local community. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will chime in on both of the points that were just shared um, through the IMA perspective. So in the Integrated Media Arts program, we focus our curriculum on what I will call practice-based design curriculum. So our students are not working on mock projects where they're simply creating something to fulfill an assignment. They're actually creating materials to supply a need that's happening in the community. We work from the 100 level classes to learn software and critique and um, working in a team environment to then the two and 300 level where we work with local community partners. We have a class called the Integrated Media Art Lab. That is one of my favorite classes to teach. Um, my students always ask my favorite class to teach and depending who's asking, it's hard for me to tell them which one because they are all fun classes to teach. But that one in particular is always a really uh, large amount of work. And starting at the beginning of the semester, we work to identify problems in the local community. We reach out and talk with people that live and work in the community. And then we identify potential partners. And in that class throughout the semester, we usually have around 15 students who work collaboratively to each create and design their own individual contributions. So very similar to a professional business setting, these students are getting a practice-based design education and that curriculum allows them to continue following semesters by taking practicum, internship, or a capstone thesis semester project. And so each of those areas um, are directly impacted by that one class. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, similar to the business content from uh, the entrepreneurial students, we also have many students in the IMA program that are creative designers that choose to create or facilitate businesses while they are students at Juniata or as they are preparing to graduate. Uh, two of our recent graduates, Matt Gaynor and a soon-to-be graduate, Jenna Miller, has started uh, two separate businesses. Matt has a film business focused in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and is working with a IT grad, um, so partnering with one of his colleagues that he was in school with. Uh, and Jenna Miller will be graduating here in May from the IMA program, individualized and merging her marketing courses as well. And her current business is focusing on branding for small businesses. And so that's just two examples of students that have taken that practical experience in their undergrad education to create a sustainable business for them to run in the future as they become uh, full-time entrepreneurs. Thanks, Ryan. Dr. Fletcher, is it possible to have experiential education and um, historical pursuits? Um, thank you. Uh, yes, it is. Um, so four years ago, I had never been inside a high security prison, and in fact, I knew nothing about them. However, I was inspired to learn more and to eventually teach in one uh, in an inside-outside class because there are two high security prisons in Huntington for men. So what is an inside-outside class? This is a program that was started 20 years ago out of Temple University and it's spread across the country and to some other countries overseas. Um, so for a full semester, a faculty member takes 10 stu students, juniata students, into the prison to learn with 10 students who are incarcerated there. They have the same syllabus and the same assignments, and they learn with and from each other through discussion and sharing across what are huge social differences. Uh, my students, both inside students and outside students, say this is a transformational learning experience, one they will never forget. 
Um, the last class I taught was last semester inside, and my students from Juniata came from all kinds of different disciplines. Uh, social work, for example, they wanted to be uh, doctors and lawyers, English teachers, one plans to work in the State Department and the other in the police force. More than any other class I teach, Inside Outside classes incite enthusiasm for learning, encourage students to find their voice, and that's both inside and outside students, and challenges everyone who takes part, and that includes me, to consider how they can make a change and a difference in the world. Um, at the end of the semester, we have something called a closing ceremony, when all the students talk to each other about what the class has meant to them. And we always invite guests, guests from the prison administration and from the college administration. So I'm going to turn this over to Provis Bowen, who's twice been an invited guest in my closing ceremony, to ask her what she thought about the programme. So I will say that being able to be part of the closing ceremonies inside out courses has been among some of the most powerful learning I've done um, as an adult and, and working in higher education to be able to hear both inside and outside students speak to what they've learned from one another demonstrates to me, I think, um, how and why learning goes beyond content and, and really appreciating the lived experiences um, and, and the, what informs our lives and, and the control we have over it and, and how we can always um, learn new things. It's, it's hard to put in words um, to convey the, the true power of that experience. Um, and I would say that that's so much part of Juniata, whether it is um, supporting students and launching their own businesses, whether it's connecting them to um, local organizations, whether it's being in solidarity and partnership with them, or maybe Professor Bogart, it's also working in the lab and, and putting your favorite provost on a bed of nails now and again um, to also demonstrate the power of experiential education. So what would you like to add as the chair of the physics department and the director of health professions? That was one of the highlights of my Juniata career. We uh, have what uh, Provost Bone was speaking about is uh, the physics students uh, every year host a physics fun night. So it's essentially an excuse to light stuff on fire, blow stuff up, and uh, hit Provost with a sledgehammer while they're lying on a bed of nails, much to the delight of a bunch of screaming, um, you know, eight to 12 year olds. So it's a great thing for all ages, but that's the uh, age demographic that just really goes crazy over this. But it's a lot of fun because the thing I think the students take out of that in terms of experiential education is how they communicate um, a complex idea at a simple level. Because let's be honest, the kids don't want to hear a physics lecture. They want to see the provost get hit with a sledgehammer. So the quicker and the more accurate you can be in conveying the kind of essence of an idea, but in terms someone else can understand, it's a really powerful skill to have. That's how, right, you have to apply for grant money, you have to talk to maybe politicians to push your agenda. So it's being able to communicate complex ideas at a level, engage the level of understanding of the person you're talking to, I think um, is something that's a really powerful um, idea. I'll also add in for um, health professions, one of the things that uh, we have a really strong network that provides experiential um, learning opportunities is our alumni network. Um, one of our alums uh, from around 1980 is president of an organization called Gift of Life, which is the leading organ transplant facility in the United States. Um, they're based in Philadelphia. So not only did this person right, have this um, kind of outcome that impacted lives and continues to impact lives, he's now um, offered two opportunities, paid opportunities during the summer for junior to health profession students to intern at Gift of Life, and they'll get to work with not only the people going through the process on the administrative end, but also on the patient end, what they're struggling with, and then get to observe you know, things like hit, um, kidney transplant, lung transplant, heart transplant. So it's a really unique opportunity for students that want to be MDs and really kind of want to get into surgery, and uh, a great opportunity um, there that kind of really has a strong experiential bent to it. Thanks to all of you for sharing those, um, those cool opportunities that would be available to students were they to come to Juniata. So building on that, I'm curious, um, how would you describe the environment of being a faculty member here or being a student at Juniata? How, how, how is it different than high school? What makes Juniata distinctive from your point of view? Um, from your various disciplines and, and backgrounds, what would you want 
um, those of us thinking about where to go to college, what do you want us to know about Juniata? Um, Dr. Fletcher, I'm going to start with you. Um, so what's special about Juniata to me? So I've been here 11 years and um, I find Juniata a really, really special place. It's a place where dreams can come true. So that's one of the reasons I love teaching here. I really appreciate the opportunity to be part of my students' journey through here, to, to, to see them reach for their dreams, to see them grow, and to aspire for futures that when they came here, they often didn't imagine were possible. Um, I think that there's lots of ways that taking a history class can really help prepare you for that future. And one of the things that I do in my uh, classes is enactments. Um, students bring the past alive by becoming someone who used to live in the past. Um, so how does this work? So I'll, I'll just give you one example. Um, I teach a class on the French Revolution, which is a fun period to study. It's a messy period. And the students become a character in the French Revolution. They learn about that character. And we assign different roles. For example, someone will be the executioner. And there is always one student who wants to be the executioner. And so what happens is it's sort of almost like an impromptu play, where the students often use the words of the characters that they have um, taken on the part of. Um, and so what do we learn? So we learn that revolutions are messy, that on the ground many people are involved, not just the big names. The revolutions once started are difficult to control and it's always impossible to predict the outcome. That being part of a revolution can be exhilarating, it can be life transformative, and it can also be frightening and unpredictable. And I think this leaves students with many memories. Years later, students will come and tell me that they still remember that class. They remember the fun they had. They remember the classmates and that it has often inspired them to pick up a book, not just on the French Revolution, but on some other part of the past from which they feel they can learn something to help guide their footsteps today. So that's one of the reasons I like Juniata, because we can do all kinds of amazing things in the classrooms that help students achieve their dreams. Dr. Wong, what do you want to tell us about uh, the teaching and learning environment from a business perspective? Juniata College is not the first school that I taught at, um, but I chose to stay because I feel very strongly that my students are not only my students, but they are also my friends and family. I'll give you an example. About six years ago, um, two students that f play football at Juniata came to my office and, and challenged me to work out with them because at the time I was a little more chubbier. Um, and they said that, Dr. Wan, since you taught us business and economics, uh, we want to teach you how to work out. Show up at the gym at four o'clock this afternoon. We're going to teach you how. So, you know, there's a little thing called dignity here in my head. I show up at four o'clock trying to see, you know, how they're going to challenge me. They were doing all these fancy moves, um, you know, obviously uh, with my age and my physical ability, I couldn't quite follow. I faithfully did the workout program with them um, for a year. Um, and now after they long graduated, I still kept in very close contact with them. But after they left, I decided to pass on. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm currently training my fourth batch of students uh, at the Juniata gym. And I would argue that Juniata College probably would be one of the few, few colleges um, that you could name that you would see professors constantly joining the workout groups with the students. And not only that, after they long graduated, they still remember me and that's their memory. Not only they remember what I taught them in the classroom, not only they will remember me, how I helped them get jobs um, uh, during their job search, but they come back for career advice. They, um, they remember me as their friend, as their mentor. That, I think, would be the one most important thing that marks the difference at Juniata, in that Juniata College, we treat everybody as part of our family, and we keep in touch with everybody. We deeply care about the well-being of our students, our alum. Um, and in talking about all these different disciplines offer in the business program, for example, we have accounting, finance, management, marketing, economics, business analytics, um, you know, all under this big business program umbrella. 
But at the liberal arts environment, we also offer an opportunity for, for our students to be innovative just to reflect upon what Provost Bowen described in her opening remarks. We try to help students um, to become the person that they want to become. Um, and uh, they don't see us as just professors. They share their stories with us. They want us to know what they want, and we help them to become what they want. Dr. Bogart, what do you want to add to that? Um, I'll kind of circle back to the kind of, um, I think, what you're asking about the teaching and learning environment. And, and as a high school student, how college is different. So kind of if, you know, before talking about something concrete, I think for students in general, one thing to kind of um, recognize is that many of you are at the top of your high school class, right? You've done great things, but various uh, amount of work have gone into that. Some of you may be able to get away for doing great on a test by studying for 10 minutes or not at all. I think in general, college is gonna challenge everyone more. And um, in a sentence, I'd say that college is learning about how to learn, right? How to be an independent learner. And I think that's one of the things that we all, the recurring themes you'll hear, that through this experiential learning, through this kind of close work with faculty member, through mentorship, that's really our goal is to help you reach that threshold. It's not easy to do, you gotta work at it. But it's one of these things that coming in the door, it will be a little bit different kind of learning how to function in that environment. So it's a really great rewarding environment, but also one that um, has some challenges, which is one of the ways, right, you grow as a person. I also think that high school students think of us, and right now looking at the screen, right, we're even um, emphasizing this metaphor that we're siloed, we're boxed, right? I'm in physics, Allison's in history, Wei Chung's in business, Ryan's in digital media. So that's not the way it is, right? We all work together on a daily basis. There's interdisciplinary classes. Um, I teach a class where we go out to the Colorado Plateau with um, a person from uh, the psychology department, someone in the education department, and someone in the biology department. And that's one of the most rewarding classes for me just because of that rich environment um, that it has. Um, one of the kind of cool things also is that the learning often, as Wei Chung and others have said, it occurs outside of the classroom. And just very briefly, we have um, in physics some students right now working with an external company that works with drones and they're working on outfitting a methane detector on this drone so that they can fly over gas lines and work with one of the main natural gas providers on the eastern seaboard to detect leaks. Because if you have, say, 20% of your natural gas leaking out, one, it's a huge environmental challenge, and two, it's a lot of money that's leaking out of your pipeline. So the opportunity is to kind of get involved in real-world problems and be part of a team that's developing solutions on that, I think is something that's really cool and something that um, there's a lot of opportunity available if um, you're interested and really want to get involved in that. Professor Givening? Yes, this is one of my favorite questions uh, because I always speak to students who are looking between fine art programs and the liberal arts environment. And so I want to share a few things. I have been teaching here this fall will be my sixth year at Juniata. And unlike many of our faculty, I actually grew up in Huntington. But not only am I back in my hometown, but uh, very similar to what Dr. Wong had mentioned, this is home. So um, I have taught at Purdue University and Penn State. Uh, my undergraduate degrees are, I have an associate degree in technical or trade school for graphic design. I have a Bachelor of Fine Art from a private fine arts school in Savannah, and I have my Master's of Fine Arts from Liberal Arts College at Purdue University. And so one thing that I think is really different and unique about Juniata is that we have the ability to um, share these collaborations between different departments. We have interdisciplinary opportunities. Uh, we have practical curriculum that in a private design school where I would have received my education, those opportunities were not available because of the, the rigidity of the, the curriculum. And so the other thing that I love about Juniata is the traditions, the fact that we have so many awesome things that happen on campus and off campus, Mountain Day, graduation. Um, there's a million different things that we have that we do on campus that make this environment such a welcome and warming campus to both our faculty and our students. 
And the final thing I wanted to mention is that we all do become family. Um, the first few years that I was teaching at Juniata, I thought it was very strange that students were, um, you know, visiting faculty and going to lunch. And then I suddenly realized that's how we work. That's how we live. And we're very supportive of our students, both in their campus life, their academic life, and also their personal lives. And um, I will share very briefly, I recently had a life-threatening medical emergency and was home for about two weeks on bed rest. And the number of calls and emails and cards sent through the mail from students um, was overwhelming. And I feel like there's probably no other place that I could possibly be that I would have that environment to to be healing and home and and have that support from both my colleagues and my students so um, it's a very awesome place to be teaching and to also be learning i appreciate all of you sharing um, so much of what makes juniata juniata i'm going to give you a chance to now talk a little bit about what it means for life after juniata so if you could um let students know what happens based on a Juniata education. And in so doing, if you have some final words of wisdom that you'd like to share, um, please do so. Wei Chung, why don't we start with you? I wanted to start from uh, discussing things that are happening in the business program. Um, you know, out of the nine faculty member, I would say that, uh, um, you know, nearly all of them have real life industry experiences before coming in. And uh, a lot of students actually seek us out because of the industry experiences that we faculty members in the business department um, uh, have, um, you know, students interested in accounting, finance, and they want to get jobs, for example, in those fields. Happy to report that six out of the nine faculty members in the business department actually had one time work in a big four, world largest big four uh, uh, accounting slash consulting firms um, uh, before coming to Juniata. And uh, we had a lot of students, uh, for example, studying in accounting, finance, economics, ended up uh, getting jobs in these uh, large um, uh, consulting firms uh, because of our network and because of our help. Um, not only that, I, I wanted to focus on one fact that is studying business in a liberal arts environment gives students the opportunity to not only learn business but also uh, things beyond business because we want to cultivate well-rounded individuals to give our students the holistic perspective about what life is about. Um, so talking about, you know, uh, the job market perspective, job, the jobs, the types of jobs that exist right now didn't exist 20 years ago, and the types of jobs that will exist 20 years from now probably don't exist today. So we're trying to give you a skill set that will allow you to teach anything that you want to learn on your own. And I think that's the point of uh, having a liberal arts education, uh, in particularly if you want to study in business, you don't just want to know business. We're going to push you out of the business curriculum to also learn other things and equip with, um, you know, the industry experiences uh, at, with the faculty in the business in the business program. You're going to be able to learn the technical skills firsthand from uh, the experts in the field. If there is a one last word that I may give you uh, before you uh, choose your uh, college, that is you wanna find an environment that could encourage you to embrace the opportunities of learning and making friends and networking with people that are friendly. And Juniata College is the place that provides that. Thanks, Wei Chen. Ryan, what would you like to add? Yes, I want to chime in on all of the things that were just shared and just add a few additional things. So the biggest thing that we focus on in the Integrated Media Arts program is that industry experience. Uh, prior to me working in academia, I was working in the design field for a number of years in different positions. And so I tie in a lot of that knowledge and skill also talking a lot about um, working with contracts, working as a consultant, students that will work in freelance or consulting environments need to understand the business side of things. So those are things that we talk about throughout the curriculum. Um, some of our outcomes and success opportunities that our students have had, we recently had multiple students apply for graduate school, getting into Parsons, Pratt, NYU, the School of Visual Arts, Savannah College of Art and Design, to name a few. 
Uh, those students are now making their final decisions about where they may attend in this fall. Um, so if students have interest in having further education, um, possibly teaching as a educator themselves, uh, um, our students through the IMA program are doing that. Um, the other thing I'm interested in sharing is we have many students that work at different types of agencies. Uh, several of our students are working at international advertising agencies, um, working at small art and design firms, working at film companies, uh, producing their own private films. And all of these things are coming out of that learning and knowledge of their industry skills and helping them understand how to get in front of people with that confidence that you have practical knowledge, practical experience. And, you know, chiming in as well that we do create lifelong learners. So we can teach you one or two things, but that reality that the industry that I entered 10 years ago is different now than it was 10 years ago. And five years from now, it's going to be different again. And so really not always giving the exact answers to the students, but really helping them understand how to be lifelong learners themselves. Thanks, Ryan. Allison? Um, so I could tell you that students who study history at Juniata go into a wide range of uh, professions and to graduate school, what they do. But I think what I'm going to do instead is to tell you two stories. Since I tell you histories about stories, I'm going to tell you two stories about two young people. The first one is a student who is now in medical school. Um, he took history classes at Juniata because he enjoyed them. Something that, as Dr. Bogart said um, earlier, a lot of um, students in the health professions do. But then he decided to do something a little unusual. He wanted to write a senior history thesis with me. He wanted to learn more about someone called Alexander Burns, who was a Scotsman who explored Afghanistan in the 1830s. And the central question that um, drove the student was, who was this man? He wanted to understand his character, what motivated him, and how he felt about the many diverse peoples that he met in his travels. Now, it was an amazing piece of original research, and it was clear that the dedicated creative, uh, creative and focused persistence on trying to understand Burns and his very different world helped the students think critically and how to negotiate many kinds of differences, whether they be a race or culture or gender or class. Um, I would argue that if you can hear and understand a voice speaking from the distant past, then as a doctor, you would be assuredly able to listen and understand the needs of each of your patients. So a skill developing studying history can translate very directly into helping develop the skills a doctor needs. Um, the student is now third year medical student and still in touch with me and hopes to publish that thesis on Alexander Burns. Um, the second story is very different. Um, the department has a growing history and museum studies program. And this particular student was really interested in restoration, conservation of historical objects. She felt that this was crucial to our understanding of the past. Um, and she excited me so much when she stood in my office and said that when she touched an object of material culture, she could actually feel she was touching the past. So when she was at Juniata, she had summer internships that were supported financially by the history department to help her develop her skills. She was awarded a St. Andrews Fellowship, which is very competitive. And she spent a year at Glasgow University studying to develop her skills even further. And she had an amazing year there, there by the way. She learned to eat haggis and she learned to play the bagpipes. Um, beyond that, uh, when she graduated from Juniata, she went off into a master's program. Uh, she is now finishing up and she intends to eventually work in international conservation. So um, my parting words might be that the students here are amazing. They're amazing as individuals and they're as amazing as a community. And I've always known this. But in the last few weeks, it's really become even more apparent to me as we've been teaching remotely. Um, they're coping with their academic work, with all kinds of different pressures at home. And their grace under this pressure has been both humbling and inspiring to me. And I continue to learn from them as I always do. So that is the true reason that I love to teach here. Thanks, Jim.
I'll, I'll just um, add on without um, going to too much detail, but, um, and again, since I'm serving as director of health professions and um, in the physics department, I'll kind of hit on something on each side. Um, health professions is extremely competitive, and in the national average for people who want to become, who apply to medical school, the admissions rate is 45%. One of the things um, that we're really proud of, both in terms of what we're able to do and in terms of our students' accomplishments, is that we um, come in at 90% on that. So we have twice the national average in getting students into medical school. And this is due to a health professions committee that we have that kind of helps mentor students through this process. And really to tie into um, kind of the, the nut of the question here, really helps you see how taking a history course can make you a better doctor, how taking a course in integrated media arts can make you a better doctor, how taking a class in business can make you a better doctor. You're not taking these classes because you have to for gen ed, you're taking them because it will make you a better healthcare professional. There's transferable skills in all these areas. And Allison pointed out a student, um, and I knew exactly who she's talking about, he was my advisee. <laughs> Uh, it's just amazing that people who have that broader skill set can really have a kind of richer understanding of their craft by being able to um, bring multiple perspectives to it. Um, in physics, I'll kind of tell a similar story that kind of relates to this. Um, one of the people who um, is an alum of the college um, is Tom Hoover, who uh, unfortunately passed away about 10 years ago, but he um, is credited with inventing the Hemi engine that you see on television all the time. And he used to come and talk to our physics students and give a talk about his work at Chrysler. And they'd say, well, you know, Mr. Hoover, what was the most important class you took at Juniata? Thinking that he'd say, you know, statics or dynamics or classical mechanics, some physics class. And while those things certainly helped transport him to the opportunities he had, he said, the most important class I took was creative writing, right? I really wasn't any better of an engineer than anyone else at Chrysler, but I was able to give a more cohesive presentation. I was able to write a report that was more understandable. And so those liberal arts skills really let him do what he wanted to do at Chrysler. And I always um, kind of like to tell that story because one of the questions in physics we get from all the parents is why should my kid go to a liberal arts college for engineering, right? Why not just go straight to an engineering school? And again, as with health professions, my kind of message would be that taking those liberal arts classes will make you a better engineer. It will help give you opportunities that other engineers won't have because of that broader skill set. We really appreciate you spending time with us um, today. And what I hope we've been able to convey to you is that Juniata is a place where you will be challenged and yet supported. You will have a breadth of experience while you develop a depth of understanding. Um, you'll be able to connect interests and fields of study. You'll have an array of experiences you may not have known possible. We may affirm everything you thought you wanted to be. We may help you realize a potential and an opportunity you didn't know you had. But to borrow from my colleagues, what I think you will find if you come to Juniata is not only students who thrive uh, or demonstrate grace under pressure, but a faculty who do, who understand their fields and are, are very knowledgeable, but also care so deeply about the success of students that there's nowhere they would rather be and no work they would rather do. I feel fortunate to work with all of them. I hope to have the opportunity to meet you in person. And mostly, we wish you well as you consider where you want to pursue your college education. I'd encourage you to reach out to any of my colleagues with any additional questions that you have. Bye. Bye-bye. My name is Claire, I'm a sophomore, and my program of emphasis is multimedia journalism. Hi, and I'm Vinny, a junior at a senior studying graphic communication. And today we are going to be taking you on a campus tour of our beautiful Juniata College campus. Let's start with our Juniata Quad, located in the heart of campus. Students play outdoor games such as frisbee and volleyball, as well as lounge around, do homework, and soak up the sun. At the end of your four years at Juniata, this is where you'll also graduate. Juniata traditions, such as Lobster Fest, Homecoming and Family Weekend, and Storming of the Arch are held here. 
That brings us to one of our most notorious locations on campus, the Cloister Arch. This is where the Juniata tradition storming of the arch is held, and it's also known as one of our most historic residence halls. One of Juniata's most iconic academic buildings is Founders Hall. This is our oldest building on campus, built in 1876. It's been expanded and refurbished since then, and it's the home of our history and English departments, along with our Quest office. Here, you can get a tutor and help with finding jobs and internships, among other things. The Registrar's Office, the Dean of Students, and the Provost and Presidential Suite also live in Founders Hall. Right behind me is Good Hall. It's home to psychology, sociology, religious studies, philosophy, education, and economics. As you can see by our small classrooms, the class size for first-year students caps at 25, and our student-to-faculty ratio is 12 to 1. Each student's relationship with their advisor is prioritized. All students have a mentor and an advisor to help with their college journey. The first floor of Good Hall is for the International Studies Program of Emphasis. 50% of Juniata students study abroad, and we have connections in 20 countries and 6 continents. For those students, and for our large international student population, the Center for International Education is located in the Aller Center. Next door is the World Language Building and the Museum of Art. The Von Liebig Center for Sciences, also known as VLB, is the home to our largest classroom on campus, Neff Lecture Hall. It's also the home to the Biology and Chemistry Department. Here, Jitter's Coffee Shop is perfect to grab breakfast, lunch, or a cup of coffee before class. Right behind me is Lesher Hall, an all-female residence hall and just one of many housing options here on campus. There are options for living on and off campus. However, you are guaranteed housing for all four years. You can have one, two, three, to seven roommates depending on where you decide to live. If you would like to live with people who speak your primary language or are interested in cultural immersion, you can also choose to live in the Global Village, where we have four floors of language options such as Spanish, French, Chinese, and German. This is Ella's Hall, home of Juniata's Dining Hall, Baker Refectory. They serve a large variety of food options. On the second floor, there is a study lounge area called Eagle's Landing, which is open 24 hours a day. Ellis's basement is home to our post office and campus store. Ellis Hall is also home to many campus resources, including the spot, which is where you can go if you need support, someone to talk to, or hang out and get some candy. Our next building is Kennedy Sports and Recreation Center. Juniata is an NCAA Division III school with a variety of men's and women's sports teams, but you don't have to be an athlete to use Kennedy. This is our indoor pool, where free swim is offered every day, and when the swim team isn't using it, we even do pool movie nights. This is the fitness center, which is open every day. Kennedy is home to the Memorial Gymnasium, where Juniata's volleyball and basketball teams compete. It also has a gym for intramural sports. Welcome to Knox Stadium. This is where football, track and field, and field hockey compete. Next door, we have the Langdon Goodale baseball field and the West End softball field. And this is Gibble Stadium, where Juniata's soccer and lacrosse teams compete. It's right next to the Raffensperger and Broomball tennis courts. Back on the quad, this is the Hall Rutter Center of the Performing Arts, which houses Juniata's theater department and performing arts series Juniata Presents, which brings world-renowned performers for the Juniata and local community to enjoy. The auditorium seats 850 and features highly rated acoustics and modern lighting and sound equipment. Hall Brother is also home to a dance and movement studio, a green room, dressing rooms, and a gallery space. Our next stop on tour is the Beagley Library, which is the central hub for research and studying on campus. This building is home to the Writing Center, group and quiet study areas, as well as food options. Around the corner is the Unity House, which holds campus ministry, as well as the Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Down the street, here is Keppel Hall, one of our newest buildings on campus. Here is the home of the Integrated Media and Studio Arts Program. There are studio spaces for video production, painting, 3D printing, photography, and more. This building is conveniently located next to three of our residence halls connected by the North Lawn. Our last stop on tour is the Broomball Academic Center. This building houses Alumni Hall, which hosts small concerts and large lectures. Here, you can also find the Technology Solutions Center, which offers technical assistance for computer and software issues, as well as renting out everything from computers to video equipment. Communication, computer science, business, physics, geology, and environmental science departments all have classes in this building. 
Speaking of our environmental science program, 30 minutes from campus, Juniata students can live and learn at the Racetown Field Station, an environmental research and education center. The Racetown Field Station offers semester-long opportunities for environmental science students to immerse themselves in this beautiful region while conducting hands-on research and classwork. That's all for our tour of Juniata. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you on campus real soon. Hi guys, welcome to the student panel. Uh, my name is Stephanie and I'm joined here by other fellow classmates. Um, we will be answering some questions for you and you guys will be watching this a little bit later on. We're gonna do our best to inform you about everything that we know about Juniata and let's just get started. So all of us are gonna tell you our name our class year, where we're from, our POE, and some things that we do on campus. So I'll get us started and then we'll start going. So like I said, I'm Stephanie. I'm from Frederick, Maryland. My POE is environmental science. I am the class of 2020. Um, so I'm a senior, it's my last year online. And some things that I do on campus include um, obviously working in admissions where I'm a tour guide. I'm an assistant admissions counselor. I am president of the Unitarian Universalist Union on campus. Um, what is my position? Treasurer of American Fisheries Society. Um, and that's just a little bit. Oh, and I'm a cheerleader on campus. Well, now I'm retired. Rob, do you want to go? Sure. Uh, my name is Rob. Uh, I am from Southampton, Pennsylvania, which is just north of Philadelphia. I am also a senior online 2020. Um, I hope we get to graduate. Um, and my POE is physics with secondary emphasis in mathematics and education. Uh, I am going to graduate school next year in nanotechnology. Um, and on campus, I uh, am the tour guide uh, Juniata associate, which means I would help um, organize tour guides for tours that are no longer going to be on campus, um, as well as I am the vice president of Null Set, which is the math club. I am in the Society of Physics Students, um, and I'm also the treasurer of soccer club. Genesis. Hi, so my name is Genesis. I am also a senior 2020 online. Um, I'm from New York City and my POE is individualized. Um, it's biological neuroscience and philosophy. I am very involved on campus and a few of the things are, I am the president and founder of the Latin American student organization on campus. I am a community advisor for the um, campus life office. So I am in charge of one of the freshman dorms and will no longer be in charge anymore. Um, I am also a part of the Plexus Fellowship, which is for underrepresented minorities on campus, and so much more, but let's just cut it short. <laughs> <clears throat> hey guys, my name is Erin. Um, I'm also a senior, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> I am from right outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have an individualized POE also, which is environmental and gender studies. Um, what do I do on campus? Um, a lot of stuff. I'm the president of Eco House, which is our off-campus living learning community focused on sustainability. Um, I'm also in the Environmental Coalition. I'm on the Ultimate Frisbee team, and I'm the founder and president of the Yoga Club as well. Um, and obviously, I also work in admissions, um, and I'm a tour guide as well. Nice. So this is all my lovely friends. Uh, we're all now part of Zoom University. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, so we'll get started talking about why we even chose Juniata. Obviously, obviously, it wasn't because we like to be face to face um, on a computer screen, but we'll tell you about all the reasons that we all deeply miss it right now. Um, Genesis, you have a really awesome story. Do you want to go first? 
Yeah, I just want to know we're not always online, guys. Just, just <laughs> really hurt that we're currently <laughs> online and we probably won't be graduating face to face. But um, when I started looking for schools, I worked for a company called the College and Career Preparatory Institute here in New York City. And it's based in the A. Philip Randolph Campus High School, which is where I went to school. And the CEO of the program was like, you need to apply to Juniata. And I was like, what on earth is Juniata? Like, I've never heard of this. What, like, where is this even in? But I trusted him and I applied. And when it came to my interview process, I had this lovely counselor who, her name is Kat, and she was basically like, how can we help you become the student that you want to be and the professional that you want to be? As opposed to all the other schools who were like, what are you gonna bring to our school to make us look better? So I, that was one of the first things that stood out to me. Then I went, First of all, I put in my down payment for Juniata before even going to see Juniata because I was just so in love with the people that I was talking to, the atmosphere, without even being there. But then I got there and I fell more in love. Um, so I took the Amtrak. Like I said, I'm from New York City. I took the Amtrak. And as we were getting there, maybe an hour left, all I could see was trees, like to the left, to the right, back everywhere just trees and I was like there's no buildings here what did I get myself into like I was literally about to cry on the app track with my mom <laughs> but once we got here when once we got to Huntington um we were looking for a taxi to take us to to our hotel and in case you didn't know there was all during that time there was only one taxi now there's two three I don't know how many. Sure. <laughs> um, I called the taxi service and they were like, did you make a reservation? And I was like, a reservation for what? They're like, you need to make a reservation to get on this taxi. And I was like, oh, well, I'm a little late because I'm already here. I didn't make a reservation. So I called my counselor and she was the one who drove me to my hotel. Um, fast forward. In the middle of the night, my mom and I are hungry, and we find this place called Top's Diner. So we walked along the highway. Not that you need to, but we didn't have a car. Or we didn't know where we were going, so we kind of just walked along the highway and went to Top's Diner, and that's where I met um, Betty McKibbins. She is now in the health center. She was in accounting, I think, before. And she just kind of eased all of my mom's, like, problems away. Like, the things that she was already foreseeing for the future, just so many people that I didn't know. I was in a place that I didn't know. I was six hours away from home. So Betty sat with my mom, and she made her feel all better. And there were so many people who knew where Juniata was and that I looked like a Juniata student. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> And then I got on campus and I fell even more in love. As soon as I looked at the Von Liebig building, I was like, this is the place for me. Like, I am so excited to be here. So that's my story. Awesome. Rob, Aaron, do you guys want to jump in? I can go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm a transfer student. Um, so I have a little of also a unique story. Um, so I used to go to a really large university in the middle of a city and um, didn't like it. Uh, I didn't look at any schools that were like Juniata the first time around. Um, and so once I got there, I realized that, you know, I didn't want, I wanted to change my major. I didn't like what I was studying. And then I realized that I only went to that school for the program instead of the school and also the program. Uh, which is what everyone says you're supposed to do. And so then I decided that I was going to change my major to um, being in the environmental field. And so then I was looking for small schools that had really good environmental programs. And as many of you know, and if you don't, we have one of the best. So I decided to look into it. And the second I stepped on campus, it was like 
it was a completely different view of college than I'd ever had. You know, it was like, this is what college is supposed to be. You know, it, it felt like a community. Um, I met the president, I think the first time I was on campus, I don't know, but it's, you, you kind of just run into everyone. Um, I had a great tour, which was really nice. Um, and it was just everything that I wanted in a school because the program was good and the people were amazing and the professors and the administration wanted me there. Um, and Molly was my admissions counselor uh, because she works with all the transfer students and she was really great at getting me all the information I needed. And now I'm her assistant or I was her assistant. Um, so yeah, it worked out really well. Um, and they made the process really easy because the process of transferring colleges is not easy and it was pretty seamless with Junietta. So I'm very happy about my decision. Yeah, I think I'll piggyback off of that because I study environmental science um, and the environmental program is what drew me to Juniata. Um, I actually got like a, I never even heard of Juniata until I got a postcard in the mail um, and our old logo has a maple leaf on it and I saw it and I was like, they've got to have environmental science. So I jumped on the website and I saw all these amazing things. I saw our field station, which is right on Raystown Lake, which is depending on what access you point, access point you go on, it's like 20 minutes, 15 minutes from campus, um, Raystown Lake is. So, and the Raystown field station is like 30, 40 minutes. And this was a place that you could uh, spend a semester, take classes and focus on uh, a certain topic um, interest. And so that was really interesting to me. So I said, hey, mom, let's go. And she's like, that's the middle of nowhere. Um, it's only two and a half hours from where I live. But to my mom, it was the middle of nowhere. And uh, we went and I applied to like 10, 12 different other schools and colleges. So it took me a while to narrow it down. And my first visit was amazing. I did an overnight at a visit um, with the cheerleading team. I did like all the things you're supposed to do. Uh, but it just, the whole transition to college was difficult for me. Um, I really was looking for a community that would be supportive uh, for my medical needs. I have a chronic illness and it was really hard for me to find a place that was allowing me to have the medical accommodations I needed and the support academically that I needed. Um, and Juniata was the place where it seemed like it was natural, like it fit in, there was no problem. Um, I met with our accommodations director the day I visited. We sat down and talked about all the different options there would be for me. Uh, even before I put my deposit down for Juniata, she emailed me and was like, let me know a percentage, like how serious are you about Juniata? And she set aside a room for me before room draw. Um, so very unique experience, but I think the defining experience for me was it came back to the community. I was sitting in a student panel um, like you guys kind of are right now and I was listening to the students talk and I realized I either wanted to be one of those students or I want to be their friend because they just kind of had the lifestyle, the, the drive, the passion, they had the interests, all the things that I wanted to have or that I wanted to be. So it all, it all happened full circle. Rob, do you have anything to add? Uh, sure. Uh, I'd say my school search uh, is pretty uh, plain and like a lot of people. <laughs> um, I'm like, you know, walking on the highway and uh, being a transfer student, but um, I visited like 12 schools. My dad is a crazy person. He wanted me to uh, have a look at the entire country before I uh, made a decision. Um, and nobody ever heard of Juniata. I found it because it was a 100% match on one of those college search websites. Uh, and when I went and I visited, uh, I had a great time. I went as a junior actually and fell in love then, which probably wasn't great because I was comparing it to every school that I visited after that. But it was awesome and I love the community. I love the fact that there's physics and that we have a Nobel Prize winning uh, alumnus from Juniata, which he is like a rock star to me. And I got a chance to work with him last summer and get an internship from him. So physics people are taken care of very nicely. Uh, so that's great. And I just fell in love with it. I actually also played tennis my first three years 
So the fact that I got a chance to do that, and I wasn't a great player, but Juniata wanted me and also said, why not play some tennis? So I made some really great friends there, met a lot of people from all over the world. Um, so I was really excited about all that. And so Juniata just hit all the, hit all my check marks. And when you are doing your search process and you start getting really involved in maybe wanting to go to Juniata, admissions makes you feel like the coolest person ever. They reach out to you a ton of times and make it really feel, feel like they want you there. And they really do. Working in the enrollment office this year and the past years as a tour guide, uh, I know that everyone really cares about prospective students and we all want you to come and are really excited for you to, we wish you were visiting campus, obviously, but um, we, will, we love to welcome new people into our community, so. Yeah. Um, so would you guys like to talk about maybe clubs and jobs, kind of our extracurriculars on campus? I know you've already kind of touched on um, we've all talked about our own jobs, but do we want to talk about clubs maybe? Sure. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll talk about the LASSO team. Um, the Latin American Student Organization was founded this year, well, fall of 2019, but this academic year. Um, I founded this group because I wanted a place for, for Latin American and Hispanic students to have a safe space and a brave space to just talk about any issues that might be going on in the world or to teach our culture to the campus because the campus is very receptive to learning new cultures and just going to different activities to be able to learn and experience these different things. So I founded the club and we have about 25 students that come regularly. And we had a Hispanic Heritage Dinner in September and we had a few other activities, but the biggest one was the Hispanic Heritage Dinner because we catered to 300 students, faculty, and staff. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so do you, how easy was it, Genesis, for you to start that club? It was so easy. All you had to do was come, with, come together with about four friends because you need um, officers for the club and just two other friends who will say like, yeah, I'll show up to every meeting. And then you just sign up and that's it. You got a new club. Yeah, and we already have, like we have over a hundred of them. And so like, there's so many that, um, that you're gonna wanna join. Like I joined as many as I could um, possibly commit to when I first got here. Um, but if there isn't um, obviously a club that for something that you want it is really easy to start one like I said I started the yoga club also super easy process um, just needed a faculty advisor and like Genesis said just some friends and it's it's a really fun and empowering um, thing to do because you can make such a difference on your campus because like the second I started it everyone was like I wanted to do yoga for so long but we didn't have a club and I was like, well, yeah, so I'm starting it. And so it's just, there's, there's like something that ties everyone together that you might not even know about um, until you, you go on, out on that limb. And then you get your own table at Lobster Fest, uh, which is our club fair, which is in the fall. Um, I actually had two tables because I was the president of two clubs. Um, and so when you're a freshman or an, a first year student, you get to walk around and sign up for a lot. A lot of clubs and everyone will try to get you to join theirs and then you get to eat lobster <laughs> exactly and try to figure out how to open it up <laughs> um yeah so kind of jumping off that do you guys want to talk about your favorite tradition Ooh. yeah sure okay. uh, rob go for it I'll go first i don't want to you know take away from everybody else but i have the best i'll go after you don't steal mine Oh, I'll go first. I know you guys don't have mine. So my favorite tradition is a liberal arts symposium. <laughs> uh, it's called Mountain Day of the Mind, which they'll explain later, I'm sure. Uh, but basically, it's a day in the spring where we don't have classes and we know we don't have class that day. It's on the calendar. And students are provided the opportunity to be able to share their research, their senior capstones, thesis projects, art projects, 
um, scripts that they've written, the whole kit and caboodle, like all of it. So for example, I have a friend who does live painting during it. Um, I was planning on giving a oral presentation and a poster presentation. Quick, raise your hand if you guys were planning on participating in LAS in some way. Yeah, see, we were all <laughs> planning on doing it. So it's such a big thing on campus. It's not just a day off. It's a day where we support our friends. We want to see what they're doing. Um, and our professors go around and listen to our presentations, go to our posters. So it's amazing. I love that day so much. It's just to me a day where we all get to just be proud of each other for all the hard work that we've done. So that's my favorite tradition. My favorite is the one that you were talking about, Mountain Day. Um, so I'm, I was a part of JAB, no longer a part of JAB, but um, I had the opportunity this year to set up for Mountain Day. So I kind of already knew before everybody else that it was Mountain Day. And so a little bit about Mountain Day. You don't know when it's coming. It's kind of like an anticipated thing. We always say Mountain Day is tomorrow because we're hoping it is. Um, and what we do is we go to Racetown Lake and there's a whole bunch of games, free food, and you just chill on the lake. You can canoe and there's a whole bunch of water sports that you can do. My favorite thing is the class versus class or class versus faculty tug of war. That is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I think just relaxing on the lake and being with your friends and taking a day off because as Juniata students, we do work really, really hard for our grades and for our presentations and everything. So just taking a day off, taking a breather and sitting by the lake is one of my favorite things. And the seniors won tug of war, I think this year, right? Yes. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> we beat the faculty <laughs> and everyone else. Strong, you know? Just saying. Too easy. Yeah. Too easy. Right, go um, ahead. Um, my favorite tradition is storming the arch. Hope I didn't take yours, Aaron, but, nope. um, and I have a, a story that I am really sad that I can't tell on tour anymore, uh, but my, my Storm in the Arch story, Storm in the Arch is a day that happens at the beginning of the fall semester, and it's kind of like a freshman first year uh, for faculty or for uh, students, and it's like an initiation type thing, so how it works is we line the quad with caution tape, and the first year students, faculty, um, I know the Dean of Students was new when we were freshmen, and so he ran with us, so people like that can run too, international students. And the we all line up on one side of the quad, the first years, and then in front of the Cloister Arch, the uh, rugby teams line up, so the men's and women's rugby team, and the first years storm the arch with the goal of trying to get through the rugby teams and through the arch. It never happens that people get through, uh, but it's really fun and it will, uh, it is a uh, really great like community experience. Everyone that's not participating is on the sides taking videos. You'll see it on Snapchat all day. Um, and for my specific time, um, you run about 10 times, like you get knocked down and then they pick you up and you go back and you run again. Uh, and around the third or fourth run when we were doing it, uh, I decided to be really obnoxious and wear a long sleeve pink shirt with these big Pikachu sunglasses that go up to like my ears up here. I actually might have them somewhere, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and I wore that and I wanted everyone to uh, take videos of me and, you know, be, be crazy. So around the third or fourth run, there's this guy on the rugby team. He's six, eight. His name's Colton. Uh, and he's very scary he has this low voice. And he lined up right, right with me and goes, Pikachu, I choose you. And I'm like, all right, dude, let's do it. So I, I run right at this guy out in front of everybody else. Um, and long story short, I've never been picked up higher in my lifetime than this, than this one moment. The glasses came flying off my face. Um, he put me down pretty gently, as, as gently as you could. Um, is that even a word? I'm not sure. Um, I was placed on the ground. Everyone took videos of it. There's actually a picture in enrollment office, if you get a chance to go there, of me getting absolutely destroyed by this guy. Uh, I did not get hurt. 
uh, minor injuries, everything's great. Uh, but it was just so fun. And I had the nickname Pikachu for about two weeks. So that was, you know, that's okay. I like Pokemon, so I'm happy. But I love that. That is such a great tradition. It's something that's so unique to Juniata. And I just am going to miss it a lot. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that, but I'll do <laughs> Um, but I'll be quick. My favorite tradition, I'm glad none of you said it, is tenting. Um, so tenting is, I think it's an unsung tradition uh, on campus, honestly. So um, tenting is, takes place in November, usually, um, and it's a week-long pretty much camp out on the quad. So you don't have to do it, obviously, but um, whoever wants to, um, everyone sets up tents in groups of like six or eight people um on the quad and you have to sleep in the tents at night um and whichever tent sets up first during like the beginning of tenting gets to be head tent and they're in charge of everything pretty much all week um so they can do roll calls any time of night that they want they can wake you up um with a horrible sounding alarm um to run out of your tent in you know your bare feet whatever and do a roll call uh, to make sure that you're there and you compete in different um, competitions throughout the week so we've done fashion shows and scavenger hunts and talent shows and all that stuff um, you still have to go to class obviously um, but you don't really get any sleep at all the whole week and the whole point of tenting is so that at the end of the week you get to be um, first in line for tickets to madrigal which is our annual winter um, dinner dance um, which is great too, but tenting is better, just getting up, up to getting tickets for it. Um, so you're pretty much guaranteed tickets to Madrigal if you tent. Um, and it's great. I mean, it's cold and rains and it snows, and but it's very fun. So I love tenting. Yeah, and the really fun part about dinner is that you can pick who serves you and it's any like professors or faculty. So um, when I spent a semester at the field station, I had the RD at the field station and his girlfriend who works in res life, I had them serve us and it was very nice. Very nice to have that kind of treatment, you know, he did not get a tip that night though. Ticket was prepaid. Um, so. Do you guys want to talk about the POE system a little bit now? Um, so Genesis, do you want to start us off to talk about the individualized POE? Yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about how I got to my individualized POE because I came in with a preset POE. So I came in as a biology POE um, and then I started taking courses. So during our freshman year, we had a system called the Fission system. So you had a certain amount of credits that you had to take in like arts, humanities, and natural sciences and things like that. So I took a few courses in philosophy and I took a few courses in psychology because there was this really cool course called Abnormal Psychology. I think it's still here. Um, and I took it and it was so cool. And so I continued taking psychology classes and I was like, I want this to be a part of my POE. So I just got a form, I went to my advisor and I sat down and I basically just structured everything that I wanted in a POE and how it would relate to whatever degree I wanted and whatever profession I wanted. So it's really easy, you just fill out the form, you kind of just let them know, you justify why you want that POE and how it would help you. You have to have a good reason, like you can't just say, cause it sounds cool. But, um, and that's it. You get assigned by all of your advisors and you hand it in. And nobody bugs you. As long as you have a good, you know, justification. Yeah, that's definitely important. Um, for me, I didn't individualize my POE until last semester, the fall. Um, and again, I'm a senior. So, <laughs> um, I mean, I had a lot of the requirements I already needed for the POE that I ended up making. Um, but yeah, you definitely need to have a solid reason. And, but you, like it's available to you as an option pretty, pretty far into your, um, into your college experience. Cause they were like, you, like I was technically environmental science for a really long time, but I wasn't actually following the curriculum of environmental science. Um, so they're really flexible and they really want to make sure that you get 
the education that you want. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to highlight, so like Genesis kind of mentioned an advisor. So when you come in freshman year, you will receive a, an advisor and a mentor. So them together are going to work with you to make sure you're following the curriculum, you're meeting all the guidelines, you're going to graduate on time, they're making sure you're on the right step. And also, you don't really have to decide your POE until sophomore year at some point. So I think it's second semester. Um, and so it's really a great time for you, especially your freshman year, to branch out and take a bunch of different kinds of classes. You'll learn a lot about yourself. Um, how, did you guys all start with the same POE that you ended up with? <laughs> yes, um, Rob? Yeah, I... Uh, you did? I did too, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm a physics, um, but I have two secondary emphasis. Uh, so physics can be very demanding with the course load, um, but Juniata allows you to branch out and their curriculum is infinitely more lenient than a lot of schools. And it allows you to take courses in tons of different um, designations and you you have to because you have to get that liberal arts education some of the, my favorite courses at juniata were science fiction and uh roman history it wasn't even called that rome republic empire and it was those classes are so so fun and i am not an english person i am not a history person i just loved being in those discuss discussion style classes and doing something different and it was just a great time and the ability to walk out with two secondary emphasis, one in education, which allows me to have a really good resume to be a teaching assistant, possibly in graduate school, as well as have mathematics, which a lot of physics people probably do anyway, but Juniata allows that and makes it very easy. And I, I really appreciate that. And Rob, you were not planning on having those secondaries, correct? Or were you? I, well, I, I thought about doing education in physics um and early on i decided i just wanted to stick with physics but uh I, I had taken so many courses already in education that i just added the secondary emphasis and it was it was pretty pretty easy yeah uh kind of to echo what you talked about with your second or your favorite classes were in the humanities i agree with that um i love my science classes i love being in the field and all of that um but i think some of my favorite classes were i it was a history class it was called the 60s um the professor who did it had retired but it was so cool it was only freshmen and we were talking about every year of the 60s through um, the history during through literature music films uh it was amazing i also really enjoyed a poetry writing class i used to write poetry in high school so it really made me realize I need that outlet. So now I continue to write. Um, does anybody else have a favorite class that they want to mention? Um, I can talk about mine, but all of mine were kind of abroad. So I studied abroad in Mexico for a semester and my classes were still science-based. So my favorite courses were like anatomy and physiology and um, pharmacognosia. So anatomy and physiology, just basic anatomy and physiology as you would take it here. But they have a really cool um, system where you go to their kind of like, I don't know how to say that in English, but it's a, a place where they have like bunnies or they have like lab rats or stuff like that that you will someday dissect and you get to see how they interact and what the organism is and everything that it includes so it's a little bit more hands-on than it would be here in the United States because there are so many regulations here as opposed to Mexico um, another class that was one of my favorites was pharmacognosia and it was also very hands-on it was a class where it's kind of like herbology so you get like let's say a rose and you do a whole bunch of extractions and you boil it and you find all of the properties and then they show you the medicinal properties. And so then you'll like go out and try to practice those. So something that I practiced was like the aloe vera healing techniques. And I did it with my house mom in Mexico. 
because she had like a few um not scratches like I don't know I don't even know what I'm saying <laughs> a few like um stitches and stuff that she had just gotten before so we put it on there and we saw like that it actually works so it was really cool to see just like my work actually come through so yeah yeah uh, go ahead Erin yeah um I'm just gonna talk about um my favorite class and how like it's helped me a lot to figure out what I want to do as a career so my favorite class is uh that I've taken at Junietta was the remote field course um which is a class in the spring semester um which means they don't get to go this year which is really sad um but it's a class you take and it's um it's very interdisciplinary um so there's um every year there's like three or four professors that do it and they're all in different areas so um and you spend the semester reading about and learning about the american southwest so the four corners region um from a historical perspective from a uh, like geology and biology uh psychology physics um changes a little bit every year. Um, oh, and education too. So it's really, really awesome to learn all about that. And then at the end of the spring semester, you go out and you spend like two and a half weeks out there camping and hiking and seeing all the things that you learn about. Um, so we go to the Grand Canyon, um, Bryce Canyon, Utah, Moab, uh, Carlsbad Caverns, a bunch of stuff out there. And so it's really interdisciplinary, which I think really helps to show what Junietta is like because that's kind of what everything is like um, and then having that experience in like all of those different areas together helped me become like realize that I wanted to work more in environmental education and um, it's a really fun thing to talk about too in job interviews uh, people think it's really cool that we have a program like that and so then I got an internship in environmental education um, after I did that, because that made me, you know, realize what I wanted to do. And you get, um, a lot of support from the professors as far as internships go as well. So I do get a lot of emails from different professors about, you know, internship opportunities and stuff. And so, um, yeah, that worked out really well. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good transition for talking about study away, study abroad, um, and kind of connections that we have on campus. Uh, for other enrichment opportunities. Uh, so you mentioned the remote field course and Genesis, you mentioned study abroad. Um, I did a study abroad semester in the Galapagos Islands. Um, so that's in Ecuador. And it was a very different kind of schedule. Um, and there's three different tracks that you can take while you're there. So you kind of emphasize in certain areas and they're all based in kind of biological or in environmental sciences. So well, the unique thing for me is that I got to change my educational path, if you will, um, and take more marine based classes. And this allowed me to expand my education to be more oceans and estuarine systems. So um, where the freshwater and saltwater mix, um, because prior to that, most of my education was in, you know, streams and Racetown Lake. And so now I have this whole continuum of the watershed that I would not have gotten if I didn't study abroad. Um, I'm also scuba certified now, and I want that to be part of my career. And I also got to practice my Spanish. My classes were in English, but I had home stays both on the mainland and on the islands, and I communicate with them in Spanish. Um, I even had a fight with my host mom in Spanish, so it was great. <laughs> we worked it out. We're still friends. I texted her. Um, the other day so we're good but you know that that showed me I really do know Spanish I knew how to fight with her <laughs> Rob do you want to talk yeah uh, I'm not a fighter I promise <laughs> um, there's a lot of great study abroad opportunities and some of them are in the people's respective fields. I know Genesis did a lot of um, medicine stuff while she was in Mexico and Stephanie got a lot of uh, ability to work in the field in the Galapagos. My study abroad, I went to the University of Leeds in England and the plan was to do nothing but travel uh, and <laughs> minimal courses and just have a great time for a semester. And that's exactly what I did uh, I went to University of Leeds, it's a big school, 33,000 students versus our tight-knit 1,500. Uh, and it's in a 
big, a decently sized city uh, with almost a million people in it. So it's a, it was a really different experience, but I had a great time. Uh, going to Europe was easy because I speak English. <laughs> or to England because I speak English and then being close to Europe with the cheap flights going to a ton of places and just exploring I had amazing trips to Paris I had amazing trips to Germany and to Amsterdam and it was really really awesome and just the uh, Juliana makes it so easy they want students to study abroad they keep you on track to make sure you get any visas you need um, that you're paying your you know, housing when you go there, stuff like that. Uh, Juniata makes it really easy and it was just the greatest experience and it's something that everyone should do while they're, bro while they're in college if they can. But if you don't wanna go for a whole semester, we do have a lot of short-term programs as well. Um, so I went to Chile on a short-term program, um, which is about two or three weeks usually. We go over, um, most of those programs go over a winter break in January or um, at the very beginning of summer. So, and they're adding new ones all the time. Whenever I went to Chile, uh, it was new. It was the first time we ever did it. Um, and it was all Chilean history and astronomy, uh, which was amazing. And so they're all, you know, based in different things. There's a conflict, uh, conflict resolution, conflict transformation, one that goes out to Northern Ireland. We have programs in Rwanda and the Gambia and the Czech Republic and, you know, all over the place. So, yeah, that's a really, really great experience if you don't want to go for a semester or if you do want to go for a semester and also a short term. Yeah. Anything else to add about study abroad? Uh, do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, so internships, have we done them? Uh, Aaron, you talked about how our professors, they do email us um when there are internships that they know about so that's really awesome we also have career services which is part of quest and they have set up something called handshake it's a platform that we all have accounts for and they put job announcements on there and it's a way it's kind of like linkedin but for students so it's a way for us to find out about them and to help us apply and career services is awesome because they provide like resume writing sessions or you can go in and you can get your resume looked at privately. Um, they literally help you with everything. Tammy Stuber works in there and I have sent her every single cover letter I have sent out in the first semester. So <laughs> they're really awesome. And we have career day too, um, which is every spring. Uh, we have over a hundred employers that come to Juniata and we have, you know, they're all in our intramural gym uh, and everyone gets to kind of walk around and, and talk to people, give out their resumes. Um, this year we had a couple of students who set up a um, like photo shoot place where you could go and get like, um, what are they called? Professional like, photos. Yeah, professional photos yeah. taken of yourself, um, which was really nice actually uh, to have that. And so everyone, yeah, yeah, headshot. <laughs> Um, and so everyone gets like a lot of professional experience talking to uh, any of the employers that go there. And, you know, I've gone every year that I've been here. So you don't have to be a senior. Um, it's just really good experience. Yeah, I think one of the best ways to get internships uh, is through our alumni network as well. That whenever you go somewhere or you start talking about um, you know, going to a job or something. It always seems like somebody either knows about Juniata, went there, their brother goes there, their best friend went there, and then they just hear all these amazing things. So Juniata is a small school. We're not going to deny that. We're in the middle of uh, Pennsylvania in the woods. We're not going to deny that either. But every, a lot of people do know about us. Uh, and it, we have some amazing alumni for myself, I was able to get my internship right through our alum or our Nobel Prize winner in physics, Dr. Bill Phillips, and I worked right next door to him uh, for a whole summer at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Gaithersburg, Maryland. So, but if I was not a Juniata student, I would not have had such an ease to get that internship. They they opened up a spot for me when I told him that I was interested, and it's probably the reason that I'm in graduate school that I am um, people really want me and it is a 
uh, just was an amazing experience and something that I thank, will forever thank Juniata for. Genesis, did you have something you wanted to add? Um, I was just gonna talk about the cocktail hour. Go I for it. Yes. Um, so for seniors, there's this cocktail hour <laughs> quotations, um, where you got to meet the employers that, that were there during career day. Most of them are alumni. I think the majority of them are alumni during the cocktail hour. So you get to have one-on-one -on -one time. Like you do have one-on-one -on -one time at career day, but you kind of get to have that connection a little bit more during that time. Yeah. Um, and to piggyback off that, during career day, I talked to an alum from some finance company and he knew I wasn't interested. We talked about how I was not interested very, very quickly. Um, but he was an alum, so he talked to me about people who I might be interested in connecting with that he graduated with. He sent me their LinkedIn account. So there's a lot of um, networking that can be done in our alumni group, even if they're not in your discipline. Uh, also to talk about internships, I definitely got a lot of support and help from my professors uh, for my internships. So one of my internships is through NOAA. Um, it's the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, and it's called the Holling Scholarship. So Dr. Bonacorsi is a bio professor, and he literally held my hand through the whole application process. Um, he's our faculty kind of like member that's like in charge of the fellowship technically. So he was kind of the contact person, and he edited my essay over winter break when he wasn't even working. Um, and helped me through this whole application. He had no idea who I was, never in any of his classes. Like I literally went into his office. He's like, who are you? <laughs> and so I had to explain like everything about myself to him. And it was a really great experience to have somebody helping me who knows the system, knows what they're looking for. Um, and so I got to work um, in the, at the Chesapeake Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve in Virginia this past summer. Um, which was like a dream internship for me. So just another example of how our professors really help us get to where we want to be. Um, so kind of to end things off, we are going to talk about what we wish we would have known when we were in the search process. You know, we're, we're put yourself back in that place, high school, don't really know what's going on. <laughs> well, I wish I would have known about Juniata sooner. Um, but um, yeah, I guess I, I would have, I wish I would have known the, um, the value of a liberal arts education more. I think that's really important that people understand it because in at least like where I'm from, <clears throat> a lot of emphasis is put on large universities, um, with big names that everyone knows about. And that's great if that's what you're interested in. Um, but I, I really think that the small liberal arts schools get, you know, looked over and people kind of ignore um, if you say Juniata and no one knows what it is, it's like, well, I'm not gonna go there. But um, the way that our school runs and, you know, at the way that everyone knows each other and you have so many, like they were talking about, um, you get so many connection opportunities and stuff like that. So I guess I would have, I wish that I would have known to broaden my search um, and to make sure also that I choose a school based on um, the program and also the school because just, just one of those is didn't cut it. Um, so yeah, that's me. Anyone else? <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Um, I guess I feel like I was very informed, but the one thing that I will always encourage is to just break out of your comfort zone, just go and talk to people. Uh, at Juniata, they, it's so easy because everyone feels like family when you're here and it just feels very, everyone's just so approachable. Uh, but when you're doing your college search, when you're on campus, go talk to the tour guides. Ask them as many questions as you can. Find out what 
what they really love about it so that you can figure out what you might really love about it. And maybe while you're at school, you might ask the right question and find yourself in an, an amazing internship that you never thought was possible. And it's all because you just broke out of your comfort zone. You um, really took a leap and did what you had to do and you're going to benefit from it. I think for me, I wish that I knew how much the community was going to shape me. Um, not quite change me because I've always been who I am, but it, the people that I've been around, the interactions that I've had on this campus, um, they have been shaping the way I think, the way I interact with people, how I form relationships ever since I first stepped on campus. Um, so I think for me, and I, you know, you could go to Juniata, I would be so happy. I will see you at alumni weekend, um, wherever you go, make sure that you're paying attention to how you vibe with the community because they are going to shape you. Who you're with is going to change how you think, what you do. And com the Juniata community has shaped me for the better. I am such a better person for it. Um, but just pay attention to that. Genesis, <laughs> do you, are, you, are you good? Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, for me, I just wanted to say that, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just scratch that, whatever you just saw, I'm so sorry, scratch it. But um, for me, I just wanted to say that follow your gut. As a first generation student, I looked at a whole bunch of schools. I looked at all the demographics, everything they had to just offer. And I was like, I need to know everything about every, all the schools. And I think that if I would have just taken time to sit down and enjoy most of what Juniata was sending me and just looking through their packages and the postcards that they would send me, I would have known from the jump that Juniata was the best fit for me instead of wasting my time and looking at other schools. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, thank you, friends, for joining me. I miss you all dearly. Um, I hope that now I'm looking at you, admitted student or as prospective students. Um, <laughs> we hope that you were well informed now and that we answered maybe some of your questions. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us. Goodbye. walked our campus, you've spent hours in the classroom. What would you want to tell your undergraduate self? It's clear that you love Juniata. It's clear that you yeah. grew a lot. I'd, I'd like to tell my undergraduate self what is written on your shirt. <laughs> something, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Isn't that great? <laughs> um, okay, so let me tell you a story. When I was, I don't know, maybe a junior here, uh, they invited somebody to give a colloquium. This guy talked about uh, general relativity and astrophysics and stuff like that. He had gotten his degree at Princeton, which is known for that kind of stuff. And afterwards, as often happens with, uh, with visitors like that, he talked to some of the students. And you know, we asked him about things like going to graduate school. So I said, well, I'd read that Princeton had the best graduate program in the United States, and so I thought I would like to go to Princeton. And he said, you know, a student from Juniata can't get into Princeton. <laughs> well, I applied to Princeton. I applied to Princeton. I applied to Caltech. I applied to uh, Stanford and MIT and Harvard, and uh, I got into all. Of them. And I and I went to Princeton uh, to visit and found out that I didn't like it. I didn't like the feel of Princeton. So I called up uh, the guy who became my thesis advisor at MIT from the lobby of the Princeton Physics Building and asked if I could come and visit him. And he said yes, and I uh, uh, and I went there, and uh, and uh, it was so wonderful to have Dan Klepner as my thesis advisor. So uh, okay, so that's not exactly advice, but it's a story. Don't let anybody sell you short. <laughs> okay, especially if you're a Juniatian, <laughs> because we can do anything, as you well know.